Hi, this is Bob Manuk from RWM Blue Water Ministries. <laughs> Welcome. Let me say right off the top, I am a Star Wars fan. My oldest son Brandon was born in 1972 and I can remember sitting in a theater when he was five years old waiting for the very first Star Wars movie to start. We can all marvel at the imagination of George Lucas to pull together this distant universe and these compelling characters has simply captured our imaginations. And we've been enjoying this for decades now. Today, I want to briefly look at the Force. It has been described uh, within the movies uh, as the life force that exists in the rocks, the trees, every living creature, all of existence in the universe. The Webster's Dictionary describes pantheism as the belief that the laws and forces of nature are all the manifestations of God. We know that nature holds a terrible power. We all have seen news reports of the devastation of an earthquake or tornado, a hurricane or a tsunami. Honestly, I have never had the opportunity to have a conversation with George Lucas to discuss what was the inspiration of the force to him. I can speculate and imagine that it was the idea of combining elements of pantheism, which is a certain particular belief that some people in the world have, uh, which talks of, speaks of the force of nature, and combining this with the idea of having priests, such as the Jedi. I remember as a child hearing of people who could bend a spoon with the power of their mind. At least, that's what I saw in the ads of the comic books. Add this feature to the pantheistic priest concept, and you have the germination of the Jedi Knight. The concept could reflect the historical Knights of the Round Table, a group of warriors, ancient, who committed their lives to noble causes of the realm. What emerges, if you combine all these different factors and influences, what emerges is the Jedi Knight, protectors of the galaxy. They employ mind control on weaker individuals and can move objects with the sheer force of their will on a life force. They can raise starfighters out of water. Who could forget Obi-Wan Kenobi saying to the Imperial Guards on the city's edge with a wave of his hand, you don't need to see our papers. And the guard said, we don't need to see their papers. And he went on to say, these are not the droids you're looking for. These are not the droids we're looking for. And they let them go through. When I have heard of people saying they were unconsciously influenced by the power of suggestion, I have commented gleefully, you obviously do not have a Jedi mind. I imagine that it does not matter how old you are, <clears throat> when you are watching Star Wars, most people identify with the heroes. Most would imagine themselves as being Jedi Knights. Some girls may imagine being Princess Leia. Maybe some guys identify with Han Solo. But I think most would gravitate towards the Jedi. Obviously, nobody wants to be Jabba the Hutt or any other array of villains. Star Wars is a remarkable story made up of multiple trilogies and standalone prequels. So here is where the spoiler alert comes in. Star Wars, the Force, the Jedi Knights, the Imperial Walkers, the Death Star is all fiction. Wonderful fiction, but fiction nonetheless. They do not really exist, no matter how much you really wish they did. But, I have good news. <laughs> if you are acquainted with me or this website, 
you will know that we are committed to the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior of the world. I am about to tell you some things that I expect most of you have never heard before. The good news is that Jesus is the Son of God, and through him, you can have eternal life. Additionally, Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit to be our comforter, our guide, our counselor, and our teacher. The Holy Spirit empowers the followers of Jesus to walk in the miraculous on the earth today. Now, in my mind, that's as close as you're ever going to get to uh, the Jedi Knights and the Star Wars realm and the Force, which is all fiction. But I'm talking here about the gifts of the Holy Spirit that Jesus has bestowed upon us who follow him. And so I want to explain that to you. And the best news is that this is real. It is not fiction. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can all be heroes, employing supernatural gifts, setting captives free, healing the sick, commanding demons to flee, and comforting the broken hearted. So when we think about the Force, as depicted in Star Wars, like Yoda levitates a starfighter from out of a pond, Obi-Wan has suggestive powers over the weak-minded. Obi-Wan sensing a disturbance in the forest when a planet is destroyed. He is sensitive to something beyond the physical. But here are thoughts of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to examine the scriptures because I don't want to stray from what, what the Bible has to, tells us. So the following is in the Bible. The story of the floating axe head. 2 Kings 6, 1-7 One day the group of prophets came to Elisha and told him, As you can see, this place where we meet with you is too small. Let's go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of logs. There we can build a new place for us to meet. All right, he told them. Go ahead. Please come with us, someone suggested. I will, he said. So he went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. But one of them was cutting a tree. His axe head fell into the river. Oh, sir, he cried. It was a borrowed axe. So Elisha, where did it fall? The man of God asked. When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water at that spot. Then the axe head floated to the surface. Grab it, Elisha said. And the man reached out and grabbed it. Then there was the story of the sun standing still. Joshua 10, verse 12 and 13. On the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. He said, Let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. Is this event not recorded in the book of Jasher? The sun stayed in the middle of the sky and it did not set as on a normal day. And then in the New Testament, there's the, the record of Jesus appearing in a locked room. Uh, and that doesn't mean appearing in a locked room, but it means the disciples were in a locked room and then Jesus appeared. John 20, verse 19, 20. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And, and, and of course, this is after the crucifixion, after Jesus rose again. And of course, they were still fearful of the leaders because they had just crucified their Lord. In Acts, it talks about Philip being physically transported. Listen to this, Acts 8, 26 to 40. As for Philip... An angel of the Lord said to him, Go south, down the desert road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Candake, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet of Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, So get this, the Holy Spirit is speaking to one of the apostles, said to Philip, 
go over and walk along beside the carriage. So Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down to the water, and Philip baptized them. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north at the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. Now some of these things, they're items that happen in the Bible and, and, and as far as we can tell, they're, they're, they're one-offs. I'm not aware of anybody else who got transported. I'm not aware of anything else that floated out of water. But, but the miraculous things that God has done and, and where he met his people. But there are more other, other things that we're going to look at now that aren't just one-offs. They, they are much more common and, and they are uh, promises that were made in the Old Testament of things that were going to happen in the New Testament. So Isaiah 42.9 speaks of the prophetic. Isaiah being in the Old Testament. Everything I prophesied has come true and now I prophesy again. I will tell you the future before it happens. Jeremiah 33, 3. Ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. Jesus said in the New Testament, John 14, 12, and then verse 26. Verse 12, he says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. And then verse 26 of John 14. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. And then there's healings. Matthew 4, 23-24. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom, and He healed every kind of disease and illness. News about him spread as far as Syria, and people soon began bringing in to him all who were sick. And whatever their sickness or disease was, or if they were demon-possessed, or epileptic, epileptic, or paralyzed, he healed them all. In Matthew 8, verse 2 and 3, suddenly a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. And Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Casting out demons. Matthew 8, 16. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command and he healed all the sick. Mark 6, 7. And he called his 12 disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. In Luke 6.18, they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those troubled by evil spirits were healed. Now some people say that Jesus gave the twelve disciples authority to drive out demons and to heal the sick, etc., but that the power to do this died with the disciples. But that is not what the Bible teaches. So here's the story about Jesus sends out 72. Because we all are acquainted with the fact that Jesus had 12 disciples, but he had many other followers. And uh, so in Luke 10, verses 1 to 3, the Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. 
So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now go and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. So now fast forward, uh, still in Luke 10, but to verse 17, 20. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Jesus walks on water. Matthew 14, 24 and 29. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In, the, in their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I'm here. Then Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. And then Jesus calms the storm. Matthew 8, verse 23 to 27. Then Jesus got out of the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, uh, a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us! We're going to drown. And Jesus responded, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. The disciples were amazed. Who is this man? They asked. Even the winds and waves obey him. So it is one thing to talk about the stories in the Bible. Uh, these are recorded for our benefit. But let's talk about experiences that happen today in this age. And I, wanna, I just want to remind you, earlier we read the verse where Jesus said, you will do the things I have done and even greater things I have done. Now we just heard the record of the things that happened to Jesus. And, and he said, you'll do greater things than even I have done. So what, 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 what's the kind of record that we've got today? A few years ago, there was a family in a rented home with young children who were waking up at night having nightmares. The parents uh, were walking up the stairs and feeling like they were passing apparitions on the stairs. So I was over there one night and they were sharing this. And uh, so anyway, I mean, when we hear things like that, we are taught in the Bible that as followers of Christ, we have authority over demons and to take authority over them. Uh, you know, um, you know, these people felt that, the, that there was a presence in their home. Some people would identify apparitions as ghosts. The Bible does not support the concept of ghosts. It does speak of demons and evil spirits, fallen angels, followers of Satan. So we prayed in faith believing. We bind the power of demons and we command you in Jesus' name to leave this property and to leave these children alone, take your hands off these children, take your hands off the parents, leave, we command you to leave in Jesus' name. And we pray the Holy Spirit surround this family of protection in Jesus' name to the edges of the property lines. And anyway, and we, so we prayed on. The following week, the testimony of this family was that the nightmares stopped and there was no longer any evidence of a presence in the home or on the property. You know, I usually hear this stuff in the news. Uh, but unless you're in the trenches with the Christians, that's where you're going to hear it. Because we are walking in the authority of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And then there's what I call Lizzie's healing. My wife was diagnosed in 2010 with leukemia. She was in prayer one afternoon in 2012 in our kitchen and felt a heat like lightning go through her body and she was healed. You will find a video on this website under healings called Lizzie's Healing. Watch it uh, for more details about her healing with before and after pics. But 
there is recorded evidence that Jesus still heals today. I have prayed the prayer of salvation with people and their lives have been transformed by the power of God and they became committed Christians, sincere followers of Christ. In fact, the book of Acts describes the exploits of the followers of Christ since Jesus went to heaven and the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to empower believers for the spreading of the gospel. In every age since then, all the way through the Acts, it talks about the exploits of the, of the followers of Christ. And all the Acts was was an introduction to the rest of the age. And through every, every age, uh, there has been a remnant, a pocket of believers who have kept the faith and walked in the power of the Holy Spirit, who have been priests of the Most High God. And when I say that, I'm not talking about priests that with, in, dressed in black with a white collar or, or, or robes. Uh, in, in a church, but I'm talking about believers. Um, and here we are today. Today, believers still march to the glory of God, bringing salvation in Jesus' name and setting captives free from the strongholds of addictions, disease, affliction, and suicidal thoughts. The church is alive and well today. I understand that there are some churches that are shrinking. Some are on the brink of closing because they have lost sight of the church's mandate, which is to spread the gospel of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Those are the churches that claim the power to heal died with the disciples. Churches that follow the biblical pattern are growing and prospering. So, in 1 Peter 2.9, it talks about, but you are not like that. For you, and it's talking about followers of Christ, it's talking about believers, for you are chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. I heard somebody recently talk about God has a one-step program out of darkness into light. <laughs> what does it take today to be part of the holy nation? Make Jesus Lord. Become a disciple, which simply means become a student of the Christian faith. Learn about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Then find your place of ministry, which simply means serving, whether in the church or in the community. Be prepared for a journey that leads out of this world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person listening to this message. Lord, and I pray that they have seen a, a vision, that they have uh, felt something in their heart of, and, and, and even, even in their senses that they have felt the presence of God. Because the presence of God is real through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, may they experience that. May they sense it. May they know that there's truth being spoken here. And it may not be something they're familiar with, but they can be familiar with. If they seek you, if they draw near to you, you will draw near to them. You will reveal yourself to them because you desire them to know you. So I just pray for each one that they would pursue you, that they would reach out to you. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to be a Christian, see the video on this website called Making Jesus Lord. Uh, it's under the category from the host. Um.